everyone in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we want to say that we love you so much and there's nothing you can do about it amen nothing you can do about that there are some things that the Lord put on my heart to share with you on today happy Sabbath to everyone I pray that you had a phenomenal night it is the four o'clock hour Hallelujah. I pray that you woke up. The Lord woke you up, allowing you, amen, to see things the way he sees, to hear the way he hears, to walk the way he walks, and to talk the way he talks. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for going before this podcast on today, Lord. I thank you for having your divine way, Lord, in this place, Lord, in this space. Lord, I give you full dominion, full power, Lord. God, I yield myself as a a yielded vessel to you, Lord, that you may speak and utter the things that may be on your heart, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you would go before the ear bone of the listener, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for doing the doing the, the the work in us, Lord. But Lord, I thank you for giving us the courage to agree with the work that you're doing in us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Saints, you know, we're gonna walk on water today. Amen. We're going to walk on water. On yesterday, uh, after we got off a of podcast, I, my, my, um, my eyes fell on Proverbs chapter 9. And it is some good, good stuff. It's some good stuff, Proverbs chapter 9. And um, if we have time, I would love to... Go, go over there and read that. It's really, really good. As a matter of fact, maybe we can start with that. And then go on to what? The other things that the Lord's given. Okay, so Proverbs chapter 9 says, Wisdom hath built her house. She hath hewn out her Seven pillars. Okay. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. Now, many, and I believe this too, that these seven pillars are representing the seven spirits of God. Right? These seven pillars are a representation of the seven spirits of God. Um. A pillar, when we begin to think just uh, from our minds, a pillar, what is a pillar? It is something uh, that can hold weight, right? It is something that can hold up uh, a building, hold up force, right? Have you ever thought about a pillar being able to hold up a force? You know what I'm saying? Uh, have you ever, have you ever thought about a pillar being able to hold up a certain energy? You know what I'm saying? Like most of the time we think of pillars of the church. We think of pillars, uh, that are in houses, uh, when they're uh, constructing these houses, houses, excuse me, and they begin to put different beams in, but there are different pillars. Okay. I would say in, 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 um, The old houses, okay? These new houses, I don't know. But in the older houses, there were different uh, structures behind the scenes, behind the paint, behind the sheetrock, behind the plumbing, uh, behind the electrical work. There were different types of walls that were pretty much uh, important enough to hold that structure up. You know what I'm saying? Like... um, uh, these these certain walls in this house if anything happened to these walls then have you ever passed by a home 
that has been um, left, okay, uh, I guess vacant, just left uh, abandoned. And um, the house is still up, but it's leaning. Have you ever seen a house that was leaning? And you're like, look at this, look at that house. That house leaning up where, well, there were different walls that needed to be there that probably had fell in or because it didn't have upkeep maintenance on it. The wall began to lean and then began to cave because, uh, in order to keep a home, um, um, in right standing or, uh, livable, then there has to be work every now and then that has to be done to the home. Every now and then, uh, there's a leak, okay, in the roof. Every now and then, you know, it seems like, okay, there's a hole that seems like it's trying to appear in this wall. So now um, we need to uh, call somebody to get over here and fix this this leak or fix this or fix that. And if uh, if a house is left and it's leaking and nobody's fixing the roof, uh, nature sets in. You know that nature sets in. A uh, leaky roof could invite mold. All right. Uh, other different things that can happen inside of the wall uh, can invite termites. Yep. And termites, we all know what they do, right? So, uh, living in these houses, it takes a maintenance, amen, maintenance. And these dirt houses, these dust houses that the Lord gave us to dwell in, these take maintenance as well. Many times we believe, now hear me, stick with me, many times we believe uh, that the only maintenance we need is nourishment, uh, feeding our bodies, giving our bodies water, taking vitamins, um, going to the gym, okay, make sure that we have that proper amount of uh, 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 social activity, yes, okay, we don't want to become hermits, right, so we go out, socialize, make sure we're still people, persons, right, and we feel like this, uh, make sure that, you know, we have the correct finances coming in, and, uh, yeah, that we're living the life, right? And a lot of times we can take this maintenance to the house and believe that that's good. Uh, but see, the thing is, uh, this is why we have the great falling away. Amen. This is why, uh, we are encountering the great falling away because many believe this same thing. Amen. Many believe that their success is in how high they can go in the, in the, in, in man's eyes. Uh huh. Many believe this and this is why, uh, we have the great falling away. Amen. This is why, uh, we have that. We're talking, we were talking about pillars. Okay. And these pillars, uh, can you, Hold up an energy. Can you hold? And most oftentimes, when we feel like, when we go way left, and we feel like that these are the only things that we need in life. We need nourishment. We need food. We need water. We need a uh, 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 shelter. We need this. But Jesus said, my meat is to do the work of, of my Father and finish it. You know what I'm saying? So what is the difference between him and us? Well, he had one nourishment. We kind of sort of, we, we choose to have another where we could dial into who we are, which is spiritual beings in an earthly body and realize that our spirit man, it, it, we need pillars, right? Do we have pillars in the earth today? Can you think of a pillar? I'm not saying somebody that can hold up um a flashy a flashy watch, a flashy ring, a flashy necklace. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about uh expounding on someone uh that can use big fabulous words. No, 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 no. Do we have pillars in the body of Christ today? This is the question. Do we have those pillars uh, that we do so need uh, in this earth realm on today. Lord, let your kingdom come and your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So in order for the Lord's kingdom to come and his will be done, do you believe that he needs pillars in the earth? Because uh, pillars aren't so much people that hold up natural stuff, but you, but we can hold up a force to be reckoned with. You know what I'm saying? 
we can hold up that standard. A pillar. A pillar is something, someone, spiritually, that um, is not going to cave. As long as as long as these uh these um these these that are they as long as they are continuing to do the maintenance on this house these pillars will not cave these pillars i can do all things through christ who strengthen me these pillars can hold up the kingdom the kingdom of god do we have pillars today? You know, my mind goes back to when uh, I, we saw a church burn, right? And this church burned down to the ground. When I tell you the church burned down to the ground, it burned down to the ground. Now, I was I was uh, younger, maybe 12, 11, something like that. And this church burned down. And the only thing left I saw, and this is amazing. As a little girl, uh, not really, uh, having much wisdom, okay, and not really having a knowing of what's really going on. What I remember what I saw left of this building after it was done burning. I saw pillars. And I saw foundation. I saw pillars. And I saw foundation. Foundation. It was the cement of where the church was on. What what the church was on. The foundation that the church was on. I saw the foundation lift. And I saw the pillars still standing what does this mean this is a great example of the great falling away lord you know should we just be dismayed that every time we look around this one done fell off and that one done fell off and that one has left and that one has left the faith and that one is teaching uh uh heresy Lord, is, is this, is this, should we not mourn? Should we not lament? But many times the Lord will allow things to go on. He would allow things to go on, things to go on for years, for years, for years. And then he comes, washes everything back down again, wash it all back down to the foundation. Why? Because if you allow man to build in his own strength, in his own way, the way he see it, every man is right in their own eyes. So if you allow man to build, just looking at the Tower of Babel, if you allow man to build in their own way, the way they see, the way they think, the way they feel, you let man build. Let them build. You're, we're most oftentimes going to get a structure, okay, that is not godly. We're going to be looking at something that's not godly. We're going to be looking at the imagination of 15,000, 20,000, 30,000, 60,000. After it's done, we're looking at the imagination of 60,000 men that came together to build something that started off, that's supposed to start off with the foundation of God, building on top of this thing. Everybody right in their own eyes. Let's get together and do this thing. And now we look and we see something that does not reflect the word of God. But wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't want you to come up against what we built. Don't come up against what we built. Uh, uh, don't do it. So how can I, how can I go about 
making what we've built right because each and every last one of us put so much work and effort and so much of ourselves into this. So now, so now, what can we do to make what we've built appear right? One person says, well, you know, I think that we can kill everybody that knows the, the true way and start raising up everybody that will believe our way. Somebody else says, well, I have an idea. Well, what's your idea? Well, you know, I think that we don't give a flip what nobody thinks. We should just keep going on because we have the money and we have the power. So it doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they see. It's what we say and what we see. But then there's another that says, why don't we change the foundation of how people see it? Tell you what, let us put all of these so-called believers, let's put them in our schools. Let's give them more knowledge. Don't, 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 yeah. We know the Holy Ghost teach you all things, but that's that. Look, look, we got to stir them away from that because we got to kill, which is a part of the foundation. We have to kill that faith that they have, that faith that they have in God. See, if they stop having faith in God, they will start leaning to their own understanding. Do you get it? Everybody nods yes. Okay, so if we kill their faith in God, it destroys the foundation anyway. So if we send them, tell them that that's not good enough. When God show you something, that's not good enough. You understand? So what we, what, what, what you really need is you really need us to show you. We ain't saved, but we smart. We ain't saved, but we smart. And because we smart, you need what I, you need what we got. So what I want you, what, 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 what we should do is let's encourage them that we're, and tell them we're going to give them a piece of paper. Hey, I'm going to give you a piece of paper. It's going to say, you did good. You learned the Bible. You, you learned how God do it. It's going to have the date on it. It's going to have that you spent this type of money on learning what God do. And it's, and you're going to, you're going to get this paper and you, my son, you daughter, you are going to be eligible enough to go and teach and preach to others. And God don't even have to be with you. If we get them to do this, if we get them to think about this and, 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 and don't, 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 don't tell them that you're, that you are taking every day their faith away from them because they're leaning on something else. Don't tell them that you're taking their trust in God away. Don't tell them that. But as a matter of fact, I want you to give them that word every day, faith. Give them that word every day, truth. Give them that, that word every day while we remove faith from them. And cause them to lean on us. Our own intellect. As I'm addressing the room. I want to let y'all know that. This can not only work. But this could, this could help. Misguide. Mislead. Others as well. So see. Where instead of us just flat out saying you're going to receive however this structure looks and you're going to you're going to take it and you're going to eat it. No, no, no. Don't force them, because usually when you force a child of God, they go back to their father and pray and things happen. You know, things happen. So don't don't force them. 
Don't force them to their knees. Don't force them up against the wall, but, but give them room. Give them opportunities and give them more knowledge. Give them more knowledge. Give them more knowledge and they'll choke themselves. They that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. So they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Well, see, now we done everything we try to do. It all boils right back down to the foundation. So we can send these out and we can have these teaching others their their method of how they did it. We can have the ones that are faking the phony, unrighteous, holding the truth. We got those. Then we got those that feel like now that they done learned the Bible, they can just, you know, we got those. We got those that are blatantly coming up against the word of God. They don't care about nothing about the word. Uh, they, and, and don't give a flip about who do. We have those that don't believe God ever existed in the first place. We have those that are willing and ready to be misled. Somebody tell me something stupid so I can believe it. Hey, you should believe in that cow out there. Moo. You know what? I believe as long as I got chicken, as long as I got fish, as long as I have uh, all these other things, I can give up cow meat. Yeah, let's believe in the cow. If you, you got people that's willing and ready to believe stupid stuff. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. So no matter what type of, 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 of ideologies and, and, and heresy of teachings and no matter what people say, it's going, it's going to boil right back down to the foundation that people have tried to destroy for years. For years. It's going to all come crumbling down like the building, like the church that came crumbling down back to the foundation and back to the pillars. Those that were holding the bloodstained banner. God says, when I come, will I find faith in the earth? And for years... I, 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 I toss and I turn with this, with this, with this scripture. When I come, will I find faith in the earth? And I was young in the faith and I, I began to wonder and ponder on this scripture. When I come, will I find faith in the earth? And Lord, I don't understand why is this in the word of God? I don't understand. You know, when I look around, I see TV evangelists and I see those that are going to and fro in the land and I see preachers and pastors and teachers and preachers and apostles and prophets and bishops and I see these people and I see them shaking their leg when they preach and I see them how rowling back and, and I, I see well you know they're tuning up and they're they're tuning their faces and, and, and everybody's doing your will Lord what do you mean when you come will you find faith in the earth but you see this is why we need the leading of the Lord. Those that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons. Everybody that come to me in that day and cry, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out devils in your name? And have we not done many wondrous works? And I say to them, Get out of my face. I don't know you. 
But wait a minute. I learned. I took time to learn about you. I paid my money to learn about you. Wait a minute. I spent years learning about you. I don't know you. Just because you know me, that don't mean I know you. Me and you, we don't have no relationship. You are fine with your knowledge. You are fine being knowledgeable to other people. You are fine with that. And because you are fine with that, you care nothing about being a pillar. You care nothing about raising the standard. You care nothing. You thought it was a game. You thought it was a game. In the great falling away, we see preachers, teachers, leaders. And the Lord, whose eyes is going to and fro in the land, he's looking closer now to see. Now that you see your teacher, preacher, leaders falling all backwards, what are you going to do? Are you going to use this as an excuse? Are you going to use this as a means to try to cover up the foundation of the things I've said? Or are you going to put your feet on the path called straight? Grab the cross and start to walk this walk by faith. What are you going to do? Because the great falling away is happening right now. And everybody that needs a, 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 a I need a reason to do what I want to do. I need a reason to believe how I want to believe. I need a reason to feel how I want to feel. The Lord says it's at your reach. Whatever you want on the buffet now, you can get it. If you want a reason to fall and fail, eat it. If you want a reason to backslide and turn back, eat that. Everything. Thing you won't. I've said it before you. I set before you this day. Life, death, good, evil. It is your choice to choose. What is it that you have an appetite for? Ah, uh, do you desire truth? In all unrighteousness. Is that what you want? Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Okay, so I want you to go down this avenue, down this boulevard, down this street. And I have a church just for you. They preach truth in all unrighteousness. That, that's your portion. Now, what do you desire? Well, Lord, I desire that. You know, I want to do my own thing. I want to go my own way. I want to have the way I want to have. It. Okay, good. I have something just for you. You can, if you want to, those, those church, those, it's on every corner. You go pick what, go pick your flavor. Pick your flavor. You like it hot. You like it spicy. You like it cool. You like it lukewarm. But there are some pastors. There are some teachers, there are some preachers, apostles, prophets, and evangelists, and lay members that are holding up the blood-stained banner. They're crying aloud and they're sparing not, lifting up their voice like a trumpet and showing the people the error of their ways, not neglecting to look in the mirror of the word. And see the reflection that is looking back at them. These are they. These are they that will make it through the tribulation. Lord, years and years and years have passed and I just don't see a, I don't see a good, I don't see, I don't see a good example. I don't see a great example.
does that cause us to stop? Does it make me wonder, is this all just a front? Is this all just something to do to just keep us busy, keep us twiddling our thumbs, keep us just rocking in a rocking chair back and forth, never going nowhere? Is this what this is? Have these people planted this in my path just to keep me going in circle for years while they make all the money? Here I am stuck on uh, trying to achieve the righteousness of God and trying to get the faith walk uh, intact. And I'm just trying. And I'm spending all my life trying to do the word of God. Is the word even real? Is it? I mean, is it beneficial? I mean, is this whole thing a lie? You know, I'm just trying to see because. This one is saying this and that one is saying that and that one over there is saying that. He's been uh been shown a lie and she's been shown a lie. And he's been shown a lie. She's been shown a lie. And it seems like they started out good. But then after we kept watching, uh, it just wasn't so good. And the true colors were shown. And it just seems like everything is a lie. So is this even worth it in the first place? Be careful. Be careful because this just might be your appetite. Your appetite? Yeah. Every time I see somebody and I think they're real, I come to find out they're not. Maybe God is waiting on you. Maybe this is why you were born for such a time as this, to walk this walk by faith and to do it by the grace of God. Maybe this is what, why God put you here on the earth. I don't know because I ain't seen nobody. Maybe the earth is waiting on you. Maybe the Lord says, this light right here, I'm going to make it shine so bright. Everybody that lied in the past, everybody that followed the liars in the past will see the salvation of the Lord through my yielded vessel. Somebody that said yes. Everybody want to be a follower, though. It's more popular. I want to follow this one and I want to follow that one. I want to be cool and I want to be, you know, I just, I just want to learn everything and just teach and preach without God. Is this a hard teaching? Of course. Is it hard for me? No. Not hard for me. I made it up in my mind. I don't care what nobody do. I don't care what nobody do. Now I pray, but I know that the Lord said that he set before us life and death, good and evil. It's, 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 it's my, I, I, I wish that you would choose life, but I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to make you the pillars. If we keep Proverbs chapter 9 and we run over to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Whatever your appetite is on today, you can have it. The Lord is allowing these things to be on the menu. It's up to us what we order. Luke chapter 18. Let's do six. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Though he bear long with him, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Well, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We talked about it yesterday. When I come, 
Will I find me? Will I find a reflection of me? Or will it be like Moses when he descended down and he found the children of Israel doing everything that they were big and bad enough to do? Everything that was in their appetite, he found them doing that. Oh, and let this be a testament to you, dear one. All of these people that were brought out of bondage, all of these people, and one Moses. Moses came down visiting with the Lord and all of these people gave an indulgence to their own appetites. But Moses, one man, one person, one form of born in sin, shaped in iniquity, by grace through faith he was saved, sanctified, blood washed, cleansed, walking upright. One man thousands of others doing what they want to do saying what they want to say having it their own way going here and doing this and doing that and just having a great time and going for the gold going for the silver so many but one man one man you could be that one man you could be that one daughter of Zion, everywhere I look, everywhere I turn, people are doing this and people are saying that. And pe You could be that one. How do you see it? How do you see it? Well, I tell you what, everybody else is doing what they want to do. I guess I, uh, I guess you can just go and give me that bill. I might well get drunk too. I, uh, followers. But do you know that the Lord is looking for somebody that will shake the dust? He's looking for somebody that says, you don't have to physically burn the house down. I'm going to let this word burn everything that's not like God down because he's a consuming fire when it comes to my life. When it comes to religion, when it comes to Christianity, when it comes to who's a daughter of Zion, who's a man of God, who's a man of valor, who's a this and who's a that, who's an elder and who's a teacher, who's a preacher. Oh, because you said that's an elder, that's an elder. Oh, because you said that's a preacher, that's a preacher. Oh, because you said that's a teacher, that I'll let the word of God do my bidding. Where have the words of man got you today? We are to respect, we are to reverence those that God has placed his authority in, those that God is walking in, those that God is doing many, many wondrous works in. But somewhere, some way, somehow, We've opened up an appetite to invite everybody in. Everybody. Long as you say they're an elder, they're an elder. Long as you say it's a teacher, it's a teacher. Long as you say it's a preacher, it's a preacher. Long as you say it's a prophet and they have their little paperwork in their book bag, then they're a prophet. That devil ain't nothing but a lie. The word of God shall do my bidding. And do you know why people are preaching and teaching against the book? Well, it's because they want you to see it the way they see it. But every time they go to sleep and they wake up, the word of God done stood up again. Darn it. Doggone it. I'm sick of the word of God standing up and making my stuff that I'm preaching and teaching look stupid. 
What can we do to get rid of the book? Nothing. God cannot die. He will not die. But heaven and earth and dust is going to all pass away. But what's going to be left standing? My beloved brothers and my beloved sisters is the word of God and its authority. So it's your best bet and it's my best bet that no matter who falls away, where and where, that we're anchored in the word of God because this is the only thing that's going to be left standing. I love you so much. And until next time, saints, be blessed. In Jesus' name.